All right, you gotta see this. We freaking went to North Korea. This building actually straddles the most heavily fortified border in the world. On that side of the table, South Korea. Where I'm standing right now on this side of the table, I'm in North Korea. Okay, yes, just a couple of feet into North Korea, but we went there to the most intense border on the planet. Right now, we're on the border with North Korea here at the DMZ. What's it like to visit the DMZ? What can you see through those binoculars when you look off into the distance into that mysterious fake North Korean town set up just a few hundred yards away? And what's with that weird music being pumped out on the speakers on both sides of the border? We'll take you there and explain it all in this episode of Window Seat. It had to be one of the most anxious bus rides we ever took. We got up way early on St. Patrick's Day and loaded up with dozens of other tourists. Destination, one of the most militarized borders on the planet. We're talking about the 38th parallel, that strip of land that splits the Korean peninsula. You know, the place you may have seen on the news a time or two. At one of the most militarized borders on earth, an historic handshake. The place President Trump took 20 steps into back in 2019, the first U.S. president to ever do so. The place defectors have sought freedom time and again. This could severely bruise the regime's military pride. He was shot at by men from his side, but was picked up by the South Korean soldiers and was taken to the hospital. Where an axe murder took place when North Korean soldiers hacked to death two American officers in 1976. NATO's Secretary General Anders Rasmussen stands just in front of North Korean soldiers as they monitor his visit to the demilitarized zone. The secretive place on the North Korean border that, judging from the size of the crowd on the day of our visit, isn't so secret anymore. A lot of the times they'll stage 10 to 20 soldiers in there that will actually pull back the curtains and kind of make derogatory gestures towards us such as slashing the throat. More than a million tourists came here pre-pandemic every year to the Joint Security Area, the JSA, or as it's often called, the Truce Village, or Panmunjom. This is the only place along the entire DMZ where North and South Korean forces stand face to face. I mean, here we are in the room with armed soldiers, literally on the world's most intense border. Some have called this the scariest place on earth. It is an uneasy feeling, the idea that one wrong move on the wrong side of this table and you could spark an international incident. In fact, they tell you don't make any startling gestures. Don't do anything crazy. And they are monitoring and recording us at this time, so please do not point, wave, or make any gestures towards that guard post in any way. Those blue buildings there are where an armistice was signed back in 1950, pausing the Korean War, and where any future talks will happen. Off in the distance there, North Korean soldiers guarding that big building, their eyes constantly trained on us. And in September of that same year, the Soviet Union appointed Kim Il-sung to be the first premier over communist North Korea. Back inside the joint security area, we are given a rundown of the history of Panmunjom, the conflict that led to the DMZ, and the do's and don'ts here on the border. Now, here's the thing. The Korean War technically ended in July 1953, but there was never an actual peace treaty signed, so these two countries are still actually at war. They call it a frozen conflict. However, no permanent agreement or settlement has been reached yet until the 27th of July, 1953. A conflict that has heated up several times in the last 70 years, right at this very spot. The most brutal event in the history of the JSA happened on August 18th, 1976, and it nearly escalated into full-blown war, and all of it over a tree. A tall poplar tree near a checkpoint limited visibility for soldiers on the south, so five South Korean civilian workers were sent to trim the tree under the supervision of guards. Well, suddenly two North Korean officers and dozens of soldiers confronted them using clubs and axes. Two Americans from the Joint Security Area, Captain Arthur Boniface and First Lieutenant Mark Barrett, were brutally axed to death by the North Koreans. Sinkarad has declared DEFCON 3. Scrum. That sent the U.S. into DEFCON 3. An aircraft carrier was deployed to the area. Two American fighter bomber battalions dispatched to. It looked like war until North Korea's leader sent an apology letter to the United Nations Command de-escalating the situation. A museum at the JSA relives those tense moments and even shows video video clips of this defection in this very spot in 2017 when a North Korean jumps from his jeep and runs for his life under fire from North Korean soldiers. 
the jeep had been speeding toward the border, inside a North Korean soldier desperate for freedom. Border guards tried to intercept him, and they eventually shoot him five times. Lying motionless against a wall, South Korean soldiers actually crawled out there to him and dragged him to safety. The museum brings into focus the dangers here near the 38th parallel, and the nearby gift shop offers mementos of the conflict and a way to memorialize your visit here, a place relatively few people did visit until an upsurge in so-called dark tourism with the advent of social media, where thrill seekers travel to danger zones like this one for bragging rights on Instagram. Can't say we blame them, we did it too. Once we've snapped a few photos, it is back on the bus, bound for the train station to nowhere. Dorosan Station was built to actually connect the north and south. Back in 2003, the rail line was finally finished, and in 2007, freight trains with industrial supplies did travel daily into North Korea. But in 2008, the border was closed by the North Korean government. Odd thing to see a railway sign with Pyongyang as the destination, but you still can't get there from here. Instead, this modern, beautiful train station sits mostly empty, a symbol of hope that one day the Koreas will be reunified. It's something so many people in the South hope they'll see in their lifetime, though the likelihood seems increasingly dim. The final stop on our tour takes us to the Dora Observatory, where we start to hear things before we see them. We can actually hear that propaganda music, anti-Western speeches, and more coming from speakers on the North Korean side. The sounds are played up to 20 hours a day. And the propaganda doesn't end there. At the front of the crowd right there, a bunch of high-powered binoculars that allow us to stare into North Korea. And the first thing you see is the propaganda village. It is essentially like a movie set, empty and constructed to just put on a show. It's called Kijong Tong, and the North Korean government claims 200 families live here with schools and a hospital and everything, but in reality, it's just an uninhabited town built 70 years ago to try and encourage South Koreans to defect. High above, a 525-foot-tall flagpole waving the flag of North Korea. The scariest place on earth? Eh, we kind of expected it to be on that bus ride up here and on that trip to the blue buildings and in the museum where they showed all the drama that's played out here over the decades. It all drove home how dangerous it really can be. But as we prepare to leave the DMZ, we couldn't help but notice how this symbol of division and war has actually brought some people together. The people, well, like us, who candidly don't mind standing in front of those big Instagram-y letters to show the world how they love traveling to places with a dark history. As long as it makes for a good photo.